Hi, it's Matt Williams from Brigantes and welcome to our office, come now, showroom. Um, obviously, due to COVID, we've had to adapt our plans for how we're going to show you guys what we do and, and introduce a lot of the kit. Now, what we're going to look at today is, is the extreme cold weather or ECW uh, requirement. And, and this is an area which we have spent a lot of time developing. We're very, very focused on a lot of the companies we have are, are specialists with, within. So there's some really interesting bits of kit that you're going to see. Uh, there's some things that I will kind of point to and, you know, you, you might get to find out soon, uh, a little bit later, but, but not just yet. Uh, so there's some, there's some, some cool things going on. Um, but, uh, yeah, well, welcome to our office. You're always welcome here. Uh, and if you ever want to come and have a chat, we can get things out and talk about things. But without further ado, let's uh, go on inside. So here we have the Hilleberg Karen 4GT mill, which is now going to be known the Hilleberg, get my teeth in, Karen 4GT tactical. What's the difference? Right, okay, so the older version has, uh, like its, its newer version as well, it is, is light blocking and it comes with all the different things you'd expect from a Hilleberg tent. You know, amazing design, really, really good ergonomics, super easy to put up, super robust. However, when they put the light blocking treatment on the fabric, it did weaken the tear strength on the fabric a little bit. And, and Hilleberg really weren't happy about this. Even though demand was, was, was there, what they wanted to do was find a better solution. So now they've improved the light blocking. So it's, it's almost double uh, what it was as before anyway. So that's even better. But it's much, much stronger. And it's much more comparable and much more in line with what Hilleberg are happy to work with from, from the point of view of quality and and, and and sustainability. So basically what this is, is a four man tunnel tent, which is the best format for using in really cold environments. It gives you a really nice workable space. Uh, it's super easy to take, uh, take down and put up. Uh, so if you want to move fast and you want to be comfortable, then this is what, this is the best tent for the job. Okay. So here I am inside the, uh, the, the Kerem four. Uh, what you can see straight away is that I'm sat in a really, really big uh, sort of porch or admin area. Um, and and this is massively different to the old uh, Arctic tent where you were really crammed in. Uh, it means that you've got a huge better opportunity for administering yourself well, for cooking in a safe way, for sorting out your kit and equipment. Now, as you can see on my, my right hand side, there is a... Um, a really, really light inner tent, uh, and obviously that's that's great because you can see what you're doing a, a lot, lot better. Um, now this this clips in one of the, one of the innovations about Hilleberg and what the Hilleberg uh, started off was that they had inner tents that were always part of the house tent, so they were clip in. You could leave them attached. So unlike a lot of other tents where you build the inner tent, then the poles, and you put the fly sheet over the top. This you just put the poles in the in the sleeves and pop up the tent so a really really clever and very useful useful system you see on here they've got a a, a cord sort of a washing line so it's great for putting things on like your your uh your gloves for drying out um and and there's, there's a whole school of thought whether it's that way around or that way around but that's that's different um so it's a really really functional space now what you get in here is you get um space for four fully grown people to 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 work out this tent in the old tents it was two on either end which so it was a bit narrower and a little bit more difficult to move around um but this gives you a really really nice wide base uh without being much much bigger uh as a as a footprint and therefore relatively easy to to uh to hide away down the far end there is another doorway but it goes into a smaller uh vestibule area um uh, rather than one, one big one here. Now, the other important thing to note here is you can see the space I'm sat in. You see this little black cord on the floor. Now, one of the top tips is within a snow environment um, is you dig what's called a cold trench. Now, a cold trench does exactly what it says. Essentially, cold air being heavier than warm air, all the cold air moves into that space. So it improves your environment straight away. You start to warm up a little bit. The other thing is you dig it to the depth where ideally from your, from your knee joint to your foot. 
And that means that you can sit on the edge of the inner tent with your feet into the cold trench. And then you can use this space uh, for administration, for cooking, for whatever else you need to do. And it just makes it a whole heap easier to get done what you need to get done within within what is a um, a very small space. Um, I think it's it, working with, within Norway, within the far north in Arctic environment, you know, it, it is that environment that uh, where it sorts the men, men from the boys or the, the girls from the ladies uh, for who can do the administration in the field. And if you could do do this kind of stuff and look after yourself and maintain yourself in that environment, then you can you can do it anywhere. It, it really is a, a real testing environment. And this helps doing that. So um, also just to introduce a few thing, other things around me uh, to my right hand side, you can see what is uh, the Arctic sleep system. You've got uh, an X bed um, uh, down mat. Uh, now, for those of you who have had the uh, the joys of sleeping on the issue uh, roll mat, then you find that it's super super thin. It's <laughs> it doesn't really offer any insulation uh, of any value uh, uh, between the ground and your body, and you know that is one of the key places that you lose all your heat. You see, this is one of the reasons why you could be in the biggest sleeping bag on the planet um, and freezing uh, because the, the ground is just sapping all that energy from you. Now, when you go to a mat like this, first of all, it's got some proper body to it uh, and it, it will really insulate against the ground. And, and it's, you know, it's it's insulative level level is our value is, is hugely greater. Um, not that that's difficult than than the issue roll mat. So you actually have a, a mat that is designed for the job that packs down really, really small, very, very light, and is going to keep you uh, warm and, and sustainable. Now, on top of that, there is a project that we've, we've worked with, with uh, a company called OMM, um, who are a, a really niche uh, little company, a UK company. And um, this sleeping bag came from... Um, is the result of trials on all variety of different synthetic bags that go down to um, these kind of temperatures you'd expect to to manage yourself in within the Arctic environment. So this one is the Tactical Arctic bag, and it's bringing all the best technology in, uh, all the things that the guys liked when they were using it, and then uh, bringing them all together, and then adding a few things in which just a little bit more appropriate to a tactical environment. So a nice big long zip down the middle, uh, a really, really nice big baffle uh, on there, which which helps obviously seal that neck area. Uh, so you'll be really toasty in in that in that setup. Cool. So I've moved myself around, and I'm now proper comfy because I'm laying on that that down mat and the sleeping bag. Um, so I promise not to nod off or try not to anyway. Um, in front of me, what I've got is uh, the new. Uh, arctic stove system uh, and it's an optimus polaris and there's some very very good reasons why this one has been chosen um first of all it's truly multi-fuel so you can see here i've got a gas canister connected to it at the moment um and a, and a quite an interesting little thing so the gas canisters are are, are are two components butane and propane in simple terms and i can never remember which way around it is one uh remains frozen the other uh, remains a liquid and the other as the other comes a gas there's a difference in the in the, in the in the boiling point on them so in order to get around that in the colder weather basically you, you turn it upside down it allows the liquid to move down into the system and as the system then pressurizes and heats up then it turns it back into a gas and away it goes now that's normally good to around about minus 15 and it gives you a really really clean burn very very low carbon monoxide um and uh and it's super safe on carbon monoxide so you will notice that obviously we are in a tent uh and and we we naturally cook in a tent from a from a military point of view from the arctic that is not something that you will find on any manual recommending you to do uh but reality is it's it's kind of the way we have to operate there uh, now mitigation of the of, of sort of the um, carbon monoxide uh, poisoning pr problem. The best way to do that is to k 
keep ventilated and and obviously keeping a good drills on your on your stove so here within the tent you've got some really really big vents that run across the top but the other thing that you'll notice on this tent or may have noticed before is that it has no snow skirts now if you put snow skirts on a tent you reduce the ventilation that is how we used to do stuff within 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 the uk military um and that's fine it's great for sealing it and keeping it nice and warm and toasty but carbon monoxide if you want to reduce the prob reduce the problem with carbon monoxide don't have snow skirts uh certainly don't put brushwood and snow on top of them because that just seals you down even more Dif different tools different ways they work different reasons for doing it it's just the advice to deal with carbon monoxide Anyway, so that is, it connects with the gas. To use the, so if it goes below minus 15 or you don't have gas, then, then you can just switch in a, uh, a liquid fuel bottle. Uh, and that just goes very, it's the same connection. And, and this one, unlike other stoves, is you don't need to change the aperture. You don't need to do any, anything with any spanners or whatever. It is just plug and play. And then you, and then you, get on with it really um so the stove itself and, and we'll do another video for, for for actually using this stove and there is a a good way of doing it and there is a not so good way of doing it so providing you don't want a sunroof on your tent and i would argue that probably not what you're after then there is a real neat way of, of lighting this stove and, and getting it going um but other than that it's the other key thing about this stove it's a completely dry system so once you've finished using it, you turn it off, it actually purges itself of all fuel. So when you're putting it back in your Bergen, and here we have the, the, the Sneagle uh, 90 litre Bergen, great bit of kit, um, then it's not going to leak all over your kit um, or your food or whatever. So you don't get that contamination. Um, also alongside here, just as extra accessories, you've got a GSI uh, pan system here, and that's just perfect size and shape for putting this this stove down and it and you, i'll show you here with the, with the the legs uh you know it claps down nice and small and neat um and it's it's very very robust uh really really good little stove system and then alongside the gsi pan set you know we've got a sig flask but sort of an introduction to those brands there's lots of opportunity uh depending on what you want as far as features with the size of the aperture the size of the cup the size of the flask Equally on this, you know, there's there's so much stuff you can go at uh, to look at here. But the key thing here with keep being able to provide heat, clean drinking water, reliably, safely um, within a tented environment. This is the daddy. This is the one that makes the big difference. Um, there you are. So very helpfully, my marketing director has now suggested it's a great idea for me to get in the sleeping bag and show you what it's like. Now, ordinarily... I'd have absolutely no problem with that at all, but it is roasting in here already. So um, the chances of going with the heat, uh, heat exhaustion are, are, are pretty, pretty good. Um, so terrible. I've got my shoes on in the, in the tent. Not a good idea. So what you'll note here on the sleep bag itself, you see at the bottom part, the channels are horizontal and that helps keep uh all the all the filling in place and stops it moving around however when you look further up you see the channels are vertical and what that allows that to do is move heat up and down your torso and and stabilizes and regulates and regulates the, the heat there so you stay a lot more comfortable uh, at neither overheating or underheating um as we climb in you can see there's a really really big battle on the on the zip itself and if i go all muffled i do apologize but on the inside good hood and wow that is red as um so and equally on the inside on the next way out because it's because it's the zip is there it's so easy to get at on the inside you'll find there's a nice little mesh pocket there and that's perfect for head torches for you know, a little merino wool hat or, 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 or a, a small pair of gloves. So everything you could need to get hold of straight away, uh, it's there. Um, so, yeah.
All right, so we've obviously moved away from the tent now, and we're going to talk around about some of the other other equipment that we have here, which is essential for living, working, and potentially fighting within within an Arctic environment, a snow shot environment. Um, so I'll take you around what we have, and we'll talk through. But we'll start off with two fairly obvious big bits of kit, and you'll see there's two pulks here. Um, a meter pulk and a, uh, I think it's a 1.3 meter pulk off the top of my head, uh, maybe 1.2. So both of these are made by a company called Acapulco and uh, really, really uh, outstanding company for producing pulks of incredible quality. And if you compare that to the pulk that we're currently using uh, for, for Norway deployments, the, then you're looking at a huge reduction in the amount of energy and effort taken to pull that pulk. And if you've ever, ever had to do that horrible, horrible pulk pull up the side of Setamone ranges, then you know exactly what I mean. Uh, and, you know, the fact that this takes a fifth of the energy. Imagine that using this. That So you can actually get somewhere and, and you can actually do something of real value with it, um, not just hang out. Uh, so other than that, it's... It, fulfills the same role of, of, as the pulp that we've the big pulps that we've been used to using before it's just got a better and more efficient uh, shape uh, it's still got a full zip on the top it comes with a, a waist belt which has a quick release system in it so if you're strapped into a pulp and then you need to get out of that quickly for whatever reason you just pull the tabs and out you go and you do what you need to do whether that's because there's a dangerous situation going on with the pulp causing you a problem or you need to start using your weapon system. Talking about that, and you'll notice here, there's a big chunk of metal in the middle of this pulk. Now that is a bracket that will take a GPMG, a general purpose machine gun. Um, amazing bit of kit really when you think about it because it allows you to bring your gun into action within a matter of, matter of seconds. So you can leave a GPMG with a belt in, good to go, patrolling along, and if you come under contact, then you quick release, get in behind the gun, and you're and you're getting effective fire down. Now the footprint of the of the pulk is sufficient that it gives you an incredibly stable firing platform. So no need to try and dig down to find some hard ground. No need to put sandbags underneath it. You you just go for it. So a really really great way of doing that. Now we're already doing the work with Acapulco on other weapon systems uh, to try and improve the functionality of this uh, but the thinking is is that you know get your weight off your backs get it onto the pulks it's more efficient it's less risky less chance of injury and you can do more with it so 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 that's that's really really cool bit of kit uh, this next to here is actually the trace so the, the 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 pulling mechanism for for the pulks themselves um but you know if you're going across that the, across the arctic or the antarctic you're probably going to be using Acapulco Pulk. You're probably going to be using a Hilleberg tent. So these are the, the the products and the brands that are entirely focused at, at that environment. Moving on um, further around, you'll see uh, uh, a set of, of of snowshoes. And again, you know, going to arguably the best pair of snowshoes you can get on the market at this moment in time. So the MSR snowshoe. Gives a, a really, really nice, lightweight, functional um, snowshoe with, with a really good crampon in it as well. So when you're crossing icy ground and you get good grip, um, it certainly makes fire manoeuvring around the, the snowshot environment a hell of a lot easier. Uh, certainly compared to the, the snowshoes that we've been used to in the past, which frankly are pretty, pretty basic. But next to that is a mock-up of a Mammut snow shovel. Um, Really, really cool snow shovel. So, so there's this is the only one that is actually rated for um, uh, uh, for for rescue. Uh, it is uh, could be using a shovel environment or, or a, sh a shovel orientation, sorry, or a pick orientation. Um, and if I bring that over over here, um, it's it gives you quite a broad uh, shovel base. 
Uh, there's the opportunity to use it as a dead man as well. Um, and you can see we, it's, it's a little bit rougher on the edges because we, we sprayed this one up. Uh, but this is one that we're working on to hopefully bring forward within within the right right colourway and, and be usable for, for the Arctic environment. Um, just behind that one, if I reach into the box here, you'll see something that you, a lot of you might have come across already. Um, and you'll certainly see the MLs using it. And this is a, um, a DMM uh, fly axe. Um, so that's, uh, yeah, it's, it's a, a key tool for the MLs and, and, and for what they're doing. And also if you've got mountain training, you should start to see these come through a little bit, little bit more. Um, behind it here, you'll see um, the Lundhag's Expedition Guide 75. This one's got different color laces than what you're used to. It's, it's all black. Um, but this works with the 75 mil binding, which you can see behind me here. Um, so, and this is the volley binding that I knew. It's not the skis you used to. This is a black crow ski. Um, uh, so a slightly broader ski, more like a ski mountaineering ski. Uh, but a really well-established boot. Yes, it's 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 a different style of skiing to when you what you're used to when doing downhill with plastic boots. But this boot has really, really moved things forward as far as keeping your feet warm and preventing cold, cold injuries. Uh, most recently, we've then worked on a, a different version of it. So it's essentially it's, it's the, the same boot, but without the 75 mil. Uh, so you can see how it's got a, a, a rounded front. Now, this is important for a couple of reasons. First of all, trying to drive with those is not necessarily the, 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 the most easy thing to do. So that makes it easier. The other thing is, is that um, just as a general boot, a winter boot, then this is the, the same warm um, performance that you find with with the with the other expedition um guide obviously um but it's a little bit more functional for just kicking around the area now what we have what we've been what been at pains to do and make this really work well is to have a ski set a ski system that would work with that as well and you can see this one here with an oac ski um uh, it works in a very similar way to a, a snowboard binding uh, but actually, it's it's a really in, re, really easy in, easy off. The way to think about it is, it's a snowshoe that slides, um, and yeah, it's not going to be something you're going to go and want to do tens of k's in across difficult terrain. But for getting the skis in, whether you're a, whether you're a helicopter pilot, whether you're a driver, whether you, whether your groups of people just need to do, move small distances easily with very little requirement on training, then perfect solution for, for that um going further around you see a couple of poles uh, they're, they're in development there um and then in the background you'll see a few little uh, shiny bits of kit mainly from the from the racks for for the mls and and, and ice climbing and whatnot